What's up guys, welcome back to another video. And as you can see, we're in a new environment because we are doing a new video. It is called Sneaker Politics, where me and my co-host Ethan are going to be reacting or talking about just stuff from the sneaker slash hype beast world. And for episode one, we're gonna be reacting to Complex's top 10 sneakers of 2020 and creating our own top 10 list. So let's get started. Okay, so for today, we'll be looking at Complex's top 10 sneakers of 2020 where they discussed on a panel during ComplexCon their top 10 best sneakers of 2020. So without further ado, let's get started with number 10. They put the W Taps New Balance 992. So Simon, what do you think about uh, the W Taps at number 10? Well, personally, I just think they're kind of just a plain looking shoe. I get it. They look really nice as, I guess, aesthetically, but I just feel like the shades of green, maybe the beige, the, I guess, gray, you say. I think it's just too plain for me, and the 992 model itself is just a little too dad shoey for me, if you know what I mean. Yeah, the only thing that really kind of hints, well, we, I've never had the shoe myself, to be fair, but the only thing that really signals me that this is a more collab as opposed to a regular is that little orange um, piece in, during the, in the midsole. So it's a little too plain for me, I don't know too much about W taps or what they do, but I just feel like this is too niche as opposed to for everybody. Yeah, and also from far away, doesn't it kind of look like those 992s, the all gray ones with like the dad shoe ones that you see like those old men wear? Oh, I literally thought I was uh, going to the store the other day and I saw some old guy with his uh, socks all the way up to his knees, just straight up cankles. And then I saw him wear the New Balance 992s. And for a second, I was like, is that, is that W tabs? Is that W tabs? Yeah, honestly, before even, this is our first time seeing a complex list, and I honestly didn't even know the shoe came out. I'm very upset by the end of this list. Well, I honestly, for New Balance, I haven't really been keeping track for the New Balance shoes, like when they release. All I know for this year is that Jaden Smith made a collab and some other, like Joe Fresh Goods, but yeah, that's all I know about New Balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's get into number nine, and number nine are. The Yeezy Quantums. Oh man, I love this shoe. We've been waiting for this shoe for so long. I remember back in, I think, All-Star Weekend of 2019, I believe, uh, Kanye posted a couple photos with that crazy 3M. And you know, now we don't, the real shoe doesn't have as much of a crazy 3M because it got banned by the NBA. And I don't think it has like as much of a lasting legacy because we didn't really see too many people wear them in the bubble. I think the only one who wore them was uh, Brandon Ingram during the All-Star game. So basketball wise, I'm not too sure how good it is, but but for now, I think it's just a, it's just a great shoe. It's, it's just super different from some of the Yeezys he's been making and then just kind of throwing his hat into the ring for basketball shoes, I think is a fresh take. You know, aesthetically, I don't know how you feel about it, but aesthetically, I think they look just straight up ugly. You know how I feel about them. You know how I feel about okay, them. Okay, but- These are great. I think personally, the stock photo looks way better than in person, because we actually have a shoe. We we don't have it on our hands right now, but we do own the pair of shoes, and I just think they look really, really ugly in person. And especially the black material near the ankle, it just feels so cheap. It's like a scuba Yeah, diver. that yeah. scuba neoprene at the heel. Definitely wasn't my favorite part of the shoe. And also another thing, maybe why people don't play basketball is that it's really, yeah, really, really heavy, really heavy yeah. with that, that super cage boost and like the super thick traction. So I don't know how good it is for basketball, but I just like wearing it to, you know, go to the gym or just walk around. Yeah. And I think the reason why I don't really like it is because, um, like you said, for basketball, it's a little too heavy. So I can't really wear it when I play basketball. And it's just so crazy that it's a little too hard to wear when you're actually like just walking around. Yeah, yeah. So for number eight on the list, we have the Travis Scott SB Dunk. Definitely one of the most overrated shoes of the year in my opinion. I mean, I mean, I tried to get I tried to get these at a local skate shop and my local skate shop charged $20 a ticket to enter in to get these dunks. And from what I remember, I think they were only a skate shop release only. So. I mean, Travis Scott, Dunk, Travis Scott and Dunks are hard to get. And then you combine them together, skate shop only, it's just, it's just a shit show all over. Honestly, I think for number eight, it's a good spot because again, like you, I don't really like the model itself, like the SB Dunk. I think it's a little too chunky for me. And overall, I just think there's too many prints going on with like 
the whole cactus jack print the bandana print and then the plaid print I just think it's too much going on but the reason why I would still put it at number eight is because I feel like it kind of revived the SB dunk hype you know what I mean no I I just I completely disagree with that you know, uh, like it did, I think, vital, um, in vitalize the dunk, but there are always people that like dunks regardless. Well, like, I feel like it made it more mainstream. You know, like how, because I feel like after this SB dunk, all the SB dunks started selling out everything. That's, not, just, a, that's not a good thing. I mean, I mean, this is just a straight up hype release. This shoe did so well for hype, they literally released it again. What is it called? The community guards are the exact same thing. Those are With so nice, bro. Those no, are... they're better than this one. This one is just, it just doesn't work for me. I understand what Especially you're Especially when you uh, rip off the uh, bandana print and it's like this kind of pink-ish, like chicken, like gross. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Chicken nugget. But paste, I definitely. Elephant print. I don't, I think I respect it for what it did. I don't like it as a shoe, but I respect it for what it did, and that is why I like it at number eight. Yeah, I hate this shoe sucks. All right, so for number seven, we have the Dior Jordan 1s, and okay, <laughs> you know what? I'll start with this. I personally think it's too low. I get it. I wouldn't put out my number one, but I think it's just so, it was that shoe. But I think the reason why I wouldn't put it at number one is because of how limited it was and for the price point it is. And it isn't for everyone. It's more for the celebrities that wear it. But I think just this Dior and Jordan collabing, I think that just blew the whole sneaker community up. Yeah, I definitely, it definitely got a lot of people talking from inside and outside the sneaker community. I mean, we even got our parents was like, hey, you know, uh, Dior is making a Jordan 1. I'm pretty like, sure they entered in their Apple too. Yeah, dude. Dude, I mean, the resell for this shoe is insane. Like like 7K, 8K? No, it was like, uh, well, now. right before it came out, it was like the highs were in the 20s. Like, that's college tuition money. That's just ridiculous. Like, as I'm just kind of looking through this list, I can see this is definitely going to be like, more of a, a lot hype. more in the hype. Well, that's more complex is case. Yeah, but I mean, just for sneakers in general, I just don't like that. If we're gonna pick the best ones, we're gonna pick the ones that nobody could grab. And I think just skimming through the list uh, that we're gonna go through further, that it's just it's just all shoes that you can't get. Like some of these shoes are definitely like I have like the W taps. I have absolutely no idea. But for most of these shoes, that they were pretty hard to get, and especially with this pandemic where sometimes it's a little easier to get them in person um i think it's just not a good thing for um just kind of shoes in general like this should be something that we should all be able to have and just talk about like obviously we do need to make some limited ones like i don't like people with, i don't like those like bread and chicago mids it just doesn't rub right with me yeah. but i definitely think they need to be more accessible yeah and i think i'll go over that over that with my own list where you guys are gonna hate me for it yeah well i understand your point at getting at and that is why i would not really put it at my number one like let's say they made these way more available the, like when you think sneaker of the year to an average person they will say the dior jordan ones because that is that shoe like even non sneaker heads will be no like, i think that there's one more that i i think i know what number one is well be. yes i know but i'm just saying the dior jordan one was the collab the shoe of not the collab but it definitely, it definitely got people talking. I, I'm going to get mad, so let's okay, just yeah, keep yeah. going. All right, so you can do number six. Oh, my God, I'm getting mad. All right, so for number six, we have the Off-White Jordan 4, another one of those absolutely unattainable shoes. So this they, shoe, were, they weren't that... I mean, they were hard they were to get. Did you get one? No. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> so for this shoe, I mean, I've, I've held it in person once over on Melrose, and it's, it's pretty cool. It does the kind of off-white things, but I think... At this point, we're kind of tired of the off-whites, like, design. Like, we don't care about that anymore. Like, by, like, this blue off-white Jordan 1, we didn't really care about the things that Virgil did to make this shoe stand out. We're just here for the colorways. Like, the Desert or Air Max 90s, come on. That's just a colorway. Like, like this is just, like, it's cool. It's nice. It's a great sale Jordan 4. But is it worth, what is it, 1200 bucks? Oh, and yeah. And it's a women's up. shoe. They so. shut up. All right, well, we're gonna have a really rough episode between us because I think these shoes are fire. And honestly, I would put them higher because colorway, again, like he said, perfect. The cream, perfect. And I like how they made the upper and the midsole a different type of cream, and that cream is right on. I'm gonna and tell you, if we're gonna talk about colorways and collabs though, 
they have to be kind of helping each other. Like this, like people like it because this of is. the color. No, people like it because of the color. Like, hear me out. Earlier this year, they had the Mushroom Jordan 4, right? If you Those are not the same If cream. you stick a Cactus Jack on the heel tab of it, it will go for four figures instead of sitting at retail. Yeah, but I don't think they'd be at the top 10 sneakers of 2020. Mm, you'd be surprised. But this let, okay, let, me, let me just go on. The sale color, off-white, just like the brand. Off-white, off-white shoe, love it. And I don't know if you can see from the stock photo, but they do have different materials for the Jordan 4. And personally, what it did, I think it revived off-white. I think off-white was definitely dead after the Jordan 1s and how they started making more shoes and people were just like, oh, like those ugly ass So what shoes. new off-white shoes came out after this ones if it revived it? That I cannot think of for now, but I definitely think it got the off-white Nike model itself revived and people started liking them more. I feel like it was at a downward trend before this shoe came out and then it went back up because of how nice it is. You release the bread ones, you might change my mind. Well, we'll see about that for 2021, but going into number five, is the Yeezy Foam Runner. And personally, Kanye has teased this on Twitter so many times. I've been waiting for these to come out. And from the start, you even know, I like these shoes. I like the concept. I like how interesting they are. So of course I got a pair and in hand, they look even better, even comfortable. It's so comfortable too. I just love the overall design of the shoe, how unique it is. I love how it's a certain, it's not all white, it's like a certain cream, just like those off-white fours. And I just love how comfortable they made it without even having boost in it. I mean, like when you showed them to me, they were fine, right? The retail price was, I think, $90? I think, yeah, $90. 90 or set, $90, $90, which is just, okay, that's pretty expensive. But for the resale value of this was what, at release around 350 and now it's... It's like 600 lit. Oh yeah. no, it's whatever. You know, yeah. we'll show the current resale price right here, but um, definitely not my favorite shoe because it's a more of a croc thing, but it definitely opened the door for like crocs in general. Like after this shoe, we saw like Post Malone crocs, Justin Bieber croc, J Balvin crocs, and those things were like... They were like charred, like the KFC Crocs. And no, they were, no, no, no. They no. were you charging cannot, you, like $50 You cannot put this Crocs. in the same level of Crocs. This is so much better than Crocs. But it opened the door for people to buy Crocs and make them cool. Because, you know, we're all sitting at home. Like, I haven't worn a pair of Jordan 1 highs in, I don't know how long. Probably since the summer. But, and then, you know, this is like a stay-at-home shoe. We can just kind of, you can put your socks on, just chill out in these shoes. I, think, I definitely do like these shoes. Do, would you put this at number five though? I have to check my list. I definitely think influence wise, I definitely think it's it's definitely there, but you, you need to make more. Like I think they did something with the algae to create this shoe, but you need to make more. You can't just have this one drop and have like a piece of foam sell for like 800 bucks or something like that. Yeah, I had to get, I had to resell my pair the prices were way too high i bought i bought it for resale and i thought i was gonna wear them i was happily gonna wear them but once i was gonna break them out i saw how much they were going for i was like i can't money's too good oh, especially for a pair of crocs or er, crocs so for number four we have a personal favorite of mine the joe fresh goods new balance 992 which i think i believe released in chicago only for the all-star yeah. weekend to pair with those um uh Kawhi omnis new balance shoes yeah. and i gotta say these these look great. These look like these look just great with all like the pink. I'm pretty sure the this red is the hues. same model with the W tops, right? Yes, the 992s. So, sure. I, yeah. Personally, I would not put it at number four, but I do respect it. I love the color of this, how bright it is. I think it's supposed to show like the anatomy of a heart. I think with all the colors, but yeah, especially what I said with the W tops, the 992 model itself is a little too dad shoey for me. But I think the very vibrant colors that they put on there made it not look like a dad shoe. And it definitely made the shoe not look like a New Balance shoe, like something special because New Balance is more for like the tonal colors, like the old people colors like gray. But I definitely do like how they made like the bright red, the pink, and it definitely made this shoe pop and make it look special. Oh yeah, there's not much I can say about it. They're just, they just look so great. Yeah. The only thing I would say is again with the numbers, but then again, New Balance is really known for having their lines really limited with like a bunch of the Ronnie Feig stuff, you know, the Kith, the Colors pack, that one is great. Yeah, another great shoe. And I think 
like those ones, it really uses the colors to kind of um, tell its story and really make it stand out. Yeah, and I definitely think not only this release, but just a combination of a bunch of New Balance releases this year, it definitely revived the brand. I would mm, say. I think it's always been going because New Balance has always had a pretty solid following. I think nowadays we're just trying to, um, we're just looking at new. <clears throat> we're just kind of getting into it now with, um, I think, like this year, like cards, is, like Pokemon cards, sports cards have kind of been introduced to the hype beast as well as the PS5, which is another separate video that I'll, I'll yell about later. All right. So we'll get on to the next part. So of number three is the Jordan 4 Unions. And I'll start. You guys have seen my review for the black one and the white one. Hate it. Looks so ugly. I think, especially with the folded tongue, I know you can unstitch them, but I just feel like they set the bar way too high for the Jordan 1 Unions that when they came back with the Jordan 4 Unions, they just, it's, it's just so bad in my opinion. Yeah, I definitely think they they kind of riff too hard with um, being similar to the off-white ones themselves, but I think for the most part, it's a solid shoe. I wouldn't really put this at number three um, for the most part, but uh, it's a pretty average shoe. And so for number two on the list, we have, to much people's surprise, the Chunky Dunkies. So what do you have to say about this shoe? I think this shoe is just fantastic. I personally think it should be number one. Yeah, I agree. Because it was the shoe of the year. Once photos leaked of it, every, it got everyone, even their moms, grandmas, everyone talking about it. And I just feel like it was the perfect shoe. Um, a, it collabed with Ben & Jerry's. It's just the perfect company, I feel like, because it's not really a hype beast company. No one would ever think Nike would collab with an ice cream company. And I just feel like the, the way they brought it out, it was still limited and it didn't, it was still the limited factor. Not everyone got it. And I just feel like the execution of the shoe itself made it perfect. Yeah, especially even with like, just even down to the print and the design of the shoe itself, you can just, you don't even need to know. You can just, you just see the Ben and Jerry's in the shoe. I don't think a lot of collabs can really say that for now, especially, especially with something like, it's the only exception being like the off-white shoes where they have the quotation marks. This shoe just screams Ben and Jerry's. Yeah. Screams ice cream. I thought it was a custom. Oh yeah, these things are great. Yeah. So. Especially with like the droopy swoosh. Yes. Oh, that was yeah. so fire. And then the the special box with the uh, ice the the Ben and Jerry's ice so carton. Fire. Fantastic presentation. I, I just don't know what number one is. <laughs> and at number, and at number one we have the off white Jordan fives. What colorway? Black. The black ones. I'll let you go. That's 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 I like I like this shoe. It's it's great. It's more more grown on me. Um, I like how they slim down the silhouette of the Jordan Five, so it's not too bulbous and bulky up in the ankle area. But definitely a surprise at number five. Number five. Number one. Number one. That's right. Number one. I I can't even believe it myself. So like there are a lot of things that I definitely like this shoe. But the things that I don't like about this shoe is definitely weighs much more than something like a Chunky Dunky, right? Like with that um, ripstop material, it's a little crappy. It just doesn't feel premium, especially when you're paying like that eight, eight to one thousand dollar resale price for the black ones. And then the whole stupid trend with the cutting circles on the shoe. It's yeah, you basically hit every point I was gonna say, but I just hate them even more. Again, rips off material, it makes it look like a trash bag because they belong in the trash. White one, the white ones though. White, okay, white, white, ones, ones are white ones are better, but still hate them. Rips off material, quality wise in general, hate the material. Aesthetic wise on the material, garbage. Hate the piss yellow. Just why would you, I get the aging of the shoe, but you had to make it piss yellow, garbage. And again, with the whole, the whole holes in the shoe, there are damn holes in the shoe, bad. Especially at number one, they made this shoe say it's better than the Chunky Dunky. I mean, I personally think they should have switched spots with the Dior's. I don't think the Dior should be at number one, but definitely more deserving than the Jordan 5. And now we're going to be going to our top 10 sneakers and I'll let you start for as your number 10. All right, so for number 10, I have a re-release of a shoe that we both loved and it was the Yeezy 350 Breads. And I just like how this, it's actually been a while since this shoe came out. 
it's been almost three years, you know. I think this this uh, Yeezy is definitely one that everybody loves. And I think it's just great that uh, Yeezy re-released them again, albeit in a little bit less numbers than I, we thought we would. But nonetheless, I'm excited that I got my pair. And I think you're excited too. You know, from my reaction, what do you think about my reaction to your number 10? Do you think I disagreed with it? Like No, I actually think you, you like them so much that I think it might be higher on your list. I actually have them higher up in my list because I'll, you know, I'll get into it later, but I definitely think it definitely deserves a spot on our list. But for my number 10, Kobe 6 Grinches. Yes. Love them. Iconic shoe. And I feel like, again, with the whole tragic thing that happened with Kobe, they have to, I guess, re-release it to the masses because everyone wants them now. The and question is if they're going to re-release it to the masses. What do you mean they are? To the masses, like oh, okay, okay, like, okay. to everybody, like those. Kobe at least, five, at least they're re-releasing it. Come on. Yeah, no, I think it, it just opens the door for more uh, exciting colorways yeah. on the line. I can't wait if they re-release the those All Star sixes. Yeah, I can't wait. If they're as comfortable as the Kobe fives, because I was not a fan of the Kobe fives until I tried them on and realized how comfortable they are. But if these are somewhere near as comfortable as the Kobe fives. I'm getting like 10 pairs. Well, the Kobe, the Kobe 6 is like the most comfortable Kobe. I, I feel like just rocking the original Kobe 6s though, they're a little too fragile and a little uncomfortable. Oh, no, they're comfortable. All right. I don't know what you're talking number about. Number nine? All right, yeah. So for number nine, I have the Dior Jordan 1 in both the highs and the lows. Not my favorite shoe because of the whole thing around it, but. Nine? Yeah, I can't, den <laughs> I mean, it wasn't gonna be on my list. But I can't deny that the impact that it had. Everybody's talk everybody was talking about this shoe. Yeah, but because it made everyone talk about the shoe, it deserves higher up in the list. But Come this, on. This is my list. I don't like this shoe. Alright, alright, all right, all right. It literally like I'm not gonna pay tuition money for a shoe that looks like another shoe that I can go grab. Like You're crazy. Those Jordan 1 Zoom Space Grays or whatever they're mm -hmm. called. They're like they're like 80% of the same thing. And you can get it for a three hundred dollars, which is already too much but better than like eight thousand dollars but you know cloud is cloud coming in at my number nine is the sp dunk travis scott God. again like i said with the complex don't like the shoe but i respect what it did brought dunks back you know all that stuff i don't respect what it did at all it made dunks just it made dunks hype. come on it man. made dunks unobtainable not hype it made it unobtainable if you like dunks before you'd like them now if you did then you're sheep also, this shoe just sucks in general. Like, take off that bandana print. Like, it's supposed to be this surprise with the bandana print, but it just looks just like this gross pink elephant print. It just, yeah. It's not great. It's not on my list, but. All right, anyways, at number eight on my list is the Yeezy Foam Runner. And with all the things that I've said about, uh, we talked about this shoe on Complex's list, just the influence on it, you know? I didn't think it was going to be on your number. I, I, I didn't even think it was going to be I don't on your like, list. I don't like, to be honest with you, I don't like most of the shoes that came out in 2020, but I got to respect what it did, you know? I don't think you could sell KFC or J Balvin Crocs for like $50 a pop okay, okay. because of this shoe. And if you said this had an influence on Crocs and you put it at your number eight, then why not Travis Scott SB Dunks? It brought Dunks back. I, can't, I actually like the colorway of this shoe and all that. I don't okay. like the Travis Scott okay. ones. I respect it. Again, I thought you completely hated that shoe when I got it, but it's grown on me. It's grown on me. At my number eight, we have the Kobe Five Bruce Lee's in the yellow colorway. Yes. Because Kobe again, five. just like the Grinches, Grinches, they're a classic, but they made them way more comfortable than the regular pair. And again, now they're more wearable. I can wear them everywhere, and they just look good with everything. Yo, you gotta include the white ones on that list. Or at least mm. part of it. It has to be the yellow, like the Bruce Lee pack. Oh, like, oh, I, I, I'll put the alternates in like an honorable mention. Category. Oh, dude, they're so good. I say you can't go wrong with classic, but I, yellow, yellow is good. Or white is good, don't get me wrong. I cannot talk enough about the Kobe 5. We'll get to that, we'll get to that. At number seven on my list, I have the Joe Fresh Goods New Balance 992. Okay. Great colorway. I don't like, the, the model of the shoe is fine. But the great colorway, the great quality, and then the storytelling, it's just, it's just, it's just great. It's just a great shoe. Yeah, I, I, I definitely didn't put it on my list, but I respect it if you know. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's definitely. My only knock shoes. was that it was so limited, but yeah, don't they go for like eighteen? No, but 100? like the limited availability is oh. always part of New Balance's thing. Like all those Ronnie Five New Balance, it's 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 within, it's what they do. It's kind of their thing. It's not like oh we have a dunk, but you can't have it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so at my number seven, I have the SB Dunk Strange Love. Mm-hmm. Those. Oh, I forgot about those. Those are so fire. Just the materials they use, like a velour, whatever you call them, and then just the colors with the shades of red, red, pink, all that with the whole Valentine's Day thing, especially with the special box. So good. It's basically what I say about the SB Dunk Travis Scotts, but me liking the shoe. Fair enough? Oh, I like I like this shoe. I just, I just, I, this year's been so long, yeah. I forgot about this shoe. I, it's so fire. The colorway is great. The availability was 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 a little. They low. shot up in price too. I don't care about that. Okay, okay, I'm just saying. That means other people like. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, for number seven, I have a shoe that hasn't even. Actually, sorry, at number six, I have a shoe that hasn't even come out yet. But I think just the buzz around it, and especially what shoe it is, is just it's gonna it's gonna turn heads anyways. It's the Jordan Eleven Adapt. Ooh. Yo, that shoe, bringing the Adapt technology to the Jordan 11s was just a great idea. Because, you know, everybody tucks in their Jordan 11 laces anyways, yeah. so might as well make it laces. I think it was just a great idea. You know, I was thinking about putting them in my top 10, but I left them more in, like, the honorable mention category because, again, we don't have them in our hands. And you know how some shoes, they just look way better in stock photos. Like but they're Jordan 11s. Wise. They're Jordan 11s. You know, I'm not much of a Jordan 11 fan, but... Again, with the whole adapt thing, it piques my interest, and again, it piques everyone's interest. So that's why I left it more in the honorable mentions category. The only thing I'm scared about is that retail price. If the Ooh. if the very minimalistic adapt BBs, which basically have like no, not too much, like Tash. just a mesh, yeah. a mesh and some cush lawn, and to put it on Jordan 11, which already costs two hundred twenty dollars, I think we may be looking at a five hundred dollar price tag. As of now, we don't know this yet, but. Maybe when we post this video, it might, some details might come out, but I am I'm crazy for this shoe. All right, at my number six, we have the Nike Air Force One Paranoise G-Dragon in a white colorway. Yes, I love this shoe, I love this shoe. The only reason I didn't put this on my list is because the black pair came out in 2019, and you know, you know the deal. Favorite shoe of the year last year. It just, uh, it didn't, it didn't come on too strong. But we, we, uh, we took a trip to uh, Japan and Asia. Yeah. Last year, last year, we didn't bring the coronavirus. Not our fault. But it just, everyone wore it. Yeah. Absolutely everybody wore that shoe. It was either there were two shoes that people wore that were like of hype, right? Black, triple black, easy three fifties, and the G Dragon yeah. Air Force ones, and then. I, when the when the release shoes didn't came out release came, in a release, I didn't even know that it had that print under for the black pair, and the white pair just did the same. The only reason I didn't is because it's kind of a worse recolor, a slightly worse recolor. You know, I would slightly have to disagree. I think the white color looks way better, and especially once you peel it off, I feel like well, we have to peel it off. That's just yeah, the fun. The of white it. base, I feel like, would look better compared to the black base. Yeah, so something unique about I the like G Dragons it. that I liked is that. The way it kind of peels off, you can't really peel it off as a whole. I've tried with my pair. Pain. It just kind of crumbles away as you're wearing it. So like those crease lines that you have, it slowly reveals a pattern. And I think it makes the shoe just flat out better. It makes you wear your shoes. Yeah. And so for number five on my list, I think Simon, you've already went for this, but I love them so much. I couldn't just agree on a colorway. And so we have... The Kobe Fives. I just the model in general. Just the model in general. The Pro Tro Fives. I love them all. From this colorway to the undefeated colorway, Bruce Lee, everything. This shoe is just, it's just, it's just great. And I think the only reason I keep it at number five was just kind of the whole de whole debacle with Mama Day. Because yeah. so as you know, Nike releases shoes and produces shoes like months in advance. So if you look at the release date of this shoe, this is in 2019. And so if you kept up with your sneaker news, this shoe was actually supposed to release in February. But as you guys know, Kobe passed away, I think a couple weeks beforehand. So just all of the Kobe's just got pushed back and they kept the same release numbers. So what we saw on the shit show that we call Mamba Week this week it was just L's and L's and L's for shoes that were supposed to be limited, but that were already supposed to be hard to get with like the ready niche client, niche market that guys like me and Simon would really like to have. And just everybody wants in on it because, you know, he's not there anymore. And um, just, it's just a little ridiculous. Like these shoes, these shoes are great. They're limited edition, supposed to celebrate the fifth title. Um, but something like the Lakers colorway or that EYBL colorway, $300 resale? You gotta be kidding me. 
Yeah, I definitely agree with the resale thing, but you know, I can't I can't argue with you. That Kobe five Pro Tro, they they I feel like they executed that the perfectly. worst way. No, they the shoe itself, the, the shoe release itself, the of release the shoe, bad. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. That's why it's only number five. It would be number one because they just killed it, but it just leaves a sour taste in my mouth when I think of how much I had to pay for those. All right, my number five, uh, we already discussed this, the Yeezy 350 bread. Again, love the shoe. I Great. think it is one of the best Yeezys ever. Just the all black model with the hit of red lettering. I just think one of the best shoes, especially when they re-released it, they didn't make it too limited where no one got it. You know, I won on the Adidas raffle, and so did I. They're just so fun. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. It's like Christmas. All right, so for number four on my list, I have something completely out of left field. You guys are probably gonna put bad comments in this video because of this, but I have on number four, I have the Jordan Three UNC. <laughs> okay, go. On. I mean, you you guys probably forgot about this shoe because it's just been such a long year, but. This shoe didn't really have a lot of hype to it, which is why I liked it. Like I've been looking forward to like this shoe for months when they said they were gonna come out on like those sneaker webs, sneaker news websites, because it, as you guys know, it's a play off the the Tar Heels PE, except yeah. they just kind of take out the UNC branding. And once it finally came around, I just, I've just never been more excited for a release and it having it gone just the best way possible. Like, it was, it was definitely still a shit show on sneakers, like. The resale price kind of reflects that on the day of release, but I was able to go to my Nike store with everybody who wanted them. We waited 10 minutes. They brought us up. I got my pair, no problems. It's just been great. It's just, it's just, it was just kind of encapsulates kind of what we see as rare now where a shoe, it's a Jordan shoes too. It's a great look. You can't deny it's a great looking shoe. I, it Okay, it is a good looking shoe, but for number four in, top for me like i said it's a weak year for me and i think it just kind of encapsulates what we're missing it's a good looking shoe we, but we haven't had a lot of in-store releases I and for me just this has gone smoothly for the most part stuff's been hard to get this year and i think this is a certifiable like certifiable just w i just got it they had it in store i got it and it was like a 20 minute thing it was great i got it for okay. retail okay okay yeah. whatever everybody has their pick my number four I think, again, we mentioned this already, the Yeezy Foam Runner. I bought these for resale. Right when I, right when Kanye actually leaked this, I fell in love with it. And once they actually came out, I was just like, I don't care. I'm spending $300 on a pair of Crocs, but I wouldn't even consider them in the level of Crocs because they just look so unique and surprisingly so comfortable. Yeah, they're, actually, they're pretty comfortable. Without even boost. So yeah, and I think um, some something really unique because all of these shoes are pretty on the list have been pretty all right, like they're overpriced. Let's be real, but like this Yeezy shoe, it's not okay. Actually, that it's ninety dollars, but it's, it's a little overpriced. But for the resale value that people are paying on StockX, yeah, like it's not that like if you go to retail, it's six hundred bucks. Like for, oh man, but for but for like seventy to ninety yeah. bucks, a little bit more reasonable. I don't. It's it's too new of a shoe and a shoe that's just hasn't been around on people's feet because of the pandemic. I don't know how it would have aged well because I think it still had that foam bottom. So I don't know how that would have aged. But this is supposed to be a shoe you just kind of put on instead of like moccasins or whatever. So I think it's, it's good, you know. All right, so at number three, I have a shoe that you absolutely hate, but I love so much. I had to bring them out because you hate them so much and I like seeing reaction to you. We have the Yeezy Quantums, man. Yeezy Quantums. Dude. Basketball, Yeezy sneakers. What can't you ask? This is the, this is just, it's just great. Like I'm not a fan of this neoprene upper as we talked about in the complex section, but this shoe, it's just, it's just kind of different. It's so different. Number three though, weak year, bro. It's a weak year. Okay. Yeah. Also, I mean, it's, 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 it's bulky yet sleek at the same time. It just, it's just interesting to look at. See, it's easy. He hates these shoes, and he's even looking at them. These are so ugly. Like, oh. also to combat that, they released a second time with in greater numbers, and I'm all for that. So, okay, first this is for the people. Can't wear these to play basketball. Too heavy, and you can't wear these just to wear around. Cause how how would you wear this on a normal day? 
People will look at you like a clown. These are so ugly. That hurt, man. No, I just don't understand. I, I bring these out to show you, and then you just you just dump on your shoes. It, I just don't Come like on. that. I mean, I mean, I put up with the, you get the okay, okay, shoes I get it, whatever. But you, you can't deny like the quality is pretty quality's good. Except not a fit. For this, except for this. Yeah, no, I don't like the neoprene. Like, okay, I thing. should say this. I respect what it did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all I need. That's all I need. I'm, I'm gonna leave these up here because you don't like them that much. What? Okay, whatever. At number three, I have the off-white Jordan 4s. Uh, you already know how I feel about that shoe. I mean, I already mentioned it in the complex reaction. Great looking shoe. Love the color. Off-white, just like the brand. And they couldn't have just executed it better. And I feel like the revival of off-white and Nike is there now. It's just It's just too plain for me. I respect like what they did, but it's just too plain, too expensive. Yeah. And so for number two, I have something that you probably are gonna hate me for again. This is the Off-White Jordan 5 in the sale colorway. So I think it combines, for me, two of the shoes that I like. So the Off-White Jordan 5 in the black colorway, and then the um, the Jordan 5 Fire Red. So it kind of combines the best of both worlds. So it slims that Fire Red aesthetic down and Off-Whites, it makes it a little bit more hype than that, um, yellow midsole because i hate when you break in a yeah. icy midsole it's you know i'm not mad about that like i get it some people like it personally it's not my taste but again at least it's not the black one i don't like literally the look like trash bags the sale ones are a little bit better but yeah a little bit better so i'm not my number two i mean i think you already know dior jordan ones again look, look what it did it broke the internet basically. Like everyone, their mom, their grandma, they entered in that Dior raffle. And just hear me out. I feel like now, after that collab, people are starting to buy Dior as a brand. Dior was dead before Jordan. Yeah, I, I ain't got money to piss. I'm just Dior. saying, I just feel like it benefited both companies. It made people start liking, I guess, it just made people just start talking and it just got both of their names out there the two yeah couples. like i said before in the complex video it definitely bookends that hype beast and um uh high fashion marriage yeah. kind of similar to that louis vuitton supreme yeah they came out a long time ago and i think we're just gonna see like thank god their number we're gonna see some horrendous fits like you see the person roll up and no like, no no not like, horrendous fits yes no. some dude is you know some dudes walking around with a gucci shirt some expensive belt, probably Gucci because they don't have taste. Some really expensive uh, jeans, and then a no, pair of Dior I feel One like highs. They made the Dior Jordan ones wearable with the gray and the white. I just felt like that yeah. added little Dior print on the swoosh just made it that chill. I mean, we've we've held it in hand before, but we were lucky to do that. But um, definitely, the details are there, and what they, what all the details and all the little accessories and crap and the presentation. It's fantastic, but just when you look at the numbers, resale for this shoe is a semester of college. Like, yeah, let's let's like if this thing was like a, if they release it and resale was a thousand dollars, I can get behind that. It probably would have been number one, but it just the money just is so off putting because this stuff is so expensive now. I think almost every shoe that we've had we've talked about is like more than half of it is a thousand dollars resale, and I think. We're kind of moving towards this weird road in shoes where some stuff is just too expensive and too hard to get anymore and people are just gonna like blink out of it, man. All right, I yep. think I think we both, both know. Have a number one. Both our number one looks like it's gonna be the same. And you, you just wanna say it together? Yeah, sure. All right, it is the Chunky, Chunky Dunky SB. I mean, just look at them. Look at this thing. We're just, you know what? We're not even gonna explain it. We're just gonna have some B-roll for it. Right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys liked Sneaker Politics episode one. And if you guys are wanting an episode two, make sure to just let us know. And again, do all the, leave a like, comment, subscribe, follow us on IG. And yeah, peace out.